Hello, Hello. Pete. how are you? I am good, my friend. How are you today? I'm doing really well. Uh, I'm doing really well. Two days of conferences talking about regulations, APIs, business, technical stacks. And we wanted to finish really about uh, this this uh, this moment on on the future of regulations, banking regulation, healthcare regulations, other industry re regulation, and personal data regulations and their impact with APIs. So uh, uh, yeah, um, let me start by uh, saying that last, uh, I think yesterday I saw a tweet from you about you know the CTO of um, uh, the F. Uh, ah, there was PrivacyCon, you know, the, the federal CTO, the federal FTC. trade commission. Yeah, the FTC. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Who was saying something about like you know we were we were care we care about privacy and we will enforce <laughs> we will enforce the rules in the next years. Yeah, there's a definitely a new. I mean, with the with the latest administration, there's a new renewed energy for. Uh, reining in the tech companies, and so there's there's a myriad of of regulation coming down the pipes, but the FTC has a new a new director who is very keen on uh, uh, making you know making sure that Mark Zuckerberg and and Facebook and YouTube, Google, and others uh, are starting to. Uh, behave in a different way. And I think we've seen a lot of uh, mo movement from these organizations uh, to regulate themselves. I don't know if maybe I'm the only one who gets the ads, but on Washington Post and Wall Street Journals, there's been full page ads from Facebook for, for months um, the last year saying, hey, we love regulation and, and we're for regulation and we want we want it. And here's how we should regulate ourselves. But the the FTC under the Biden administration is very keen on uh, on regulating the companies and setting up uh, new laws. One of the uh, current bills be going through Congress right now is called the Augmenting Compatibility and Competition by Enabling Service Switching Access Act of 2021. So I guess access is an acronym for Augmenting Compatibility and Competition by Enabling Service. So that's a mouthful, but uh, what the what the service or what the bill proposes is that uh, that that these uh, companies of a certain size and revenue, so number of users on the platform and amount of revenue, have to provide APIs for portability and interoperability. Now the problem is is it doesn't go into well what resources, what services, what data, and very much what you just covered with GDPR, a lot of the the, the vagueness of what, uh, what actually needs to be done, the technical details. And the bill says that, well, the FTC is going to, um, has a commission that will figure this out. And this commission will be a group of internal Federal Trade Commission employees, um, and as well as uh, people from the space, experts and and competitors even, and then they will define what the standards are, and and then the 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 covered platforms, which are these platforms of a certain size, will have to just adhere to uh, these standards. Uh, but then, if the platforms want to change, they have to notify the FTC to to change this. And this bill is just in committee right now in Congress, so it's not passed. Um, and uh, it remains to be seen if it will, but it's a little taste of, even if it doesn't pass, I think it, it reflects, I think, what we're going to see a lot of in, in coming months and years. Because, uh, um, so Facebook has been known as a company who are using their API and API strategy in uh, always serving their own interest. Okay, why not? But sometimes not in the best interest of the users. And so I think the FTC is currently like, Evaluating Facebook antitrust policy, especially on their API practice in in terms of services, right? Yes, yes, because they've been. I mean, you can see echoes of it in this one bill that uh, Facebook has deprecated APIs without even letting you know. There are APIs that have disappeared that aren't on the roadmap, aren't on the change log, and they just go away. And so uh, they're they're trying to. Um, you know, the, the, the lawsuit that's currently, that's not associated with this, this act, the lawsuit that the FTC has against Facebook right now is, is charging them with an, anti-competitive practices that stems from the acquisition of Instagram. 
and then the acquisition of WhatsApp. And that uh, in the API ecosystem, if you're, uh, you know, Instagram was identified as the number one photo sharing, you know, competitor for Facebook in the space. So they acquired them. If you're number two or number three, your API experience isn't the greatest is, is what's being claimed. Similar to what, what you just articulated with the GDPR, you, you can still have an API. There are many ways you can make that API unusable uh, for competitors. And that's what's being charged is that uh, Facebook is anti-competitive when it comes to these number two, three, and four players in, in, in photo space, as well as messaging when it comes to WhatsApp and others. So uh, if if we do if so uh, if we go back in a little bit of uh, the history of API and regulation in the U.S., I think from my remembering, but the first one was former President Barack Obama who said that every federal agency should have an API. If I must have an API in 2013, right? That was that was one of the first. Yes. Well, I mean, so somewhat API regulation. I would say it's more data regulation, um, and but. APIs were published as part of that. So yeah, in 2013, uh, Barack Obama uh, said that all federal agencies need to go machine readable by default. And if it's a public data asset, it needs to be available um, in in the root of their domain as a standardized JSON format. And I was one of the, the several folks who went around to different agencies for the administration uh, trying to get agencies to publish this data. And it was very much like you go in and say, hey, where's your public data assets? And they go, well, we have them here in the spreadsheets. And I was like, well, you need to publish them as JSON or XML. And they would go, what's that? And then they, and then I would educate them on what that was. And they they were still confused. And and it ended up with a lot of data being published. There was, there was, there's, and it's still there. You can go to data.gov and see this it's still in action. The data is still being published and there's an API available at data.gov for accessing uh, this, this, these public data assets across uh, federal a U.S. federal agencies. Now the devil's in the details again. Uh, you did a very good job of articulating how, how this occurs in it with GDPR, but Sometimes you hit the API, the data.gov API for an agency for a data set, and it's not quite machine readable. It's a spreadsheet or it's a zip file or it's an ASP file. There's many different ways that uh, organizations publish this that didn't make it very usable. And I don't want to say they did that maliciously. Uh, they're, they're probably very well-meaning and, and were complying with the order. But... This is actually being the the data act, uh, act is actually being renewed right now. I just spoke with uh, the govern uh, the government accountability office, the GAO, out of the U.S. Congress uh, like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and they interviewed me. And they're uh, they're coming up with what the next wave of of regulation is going to be, and that is going to include more API access, more API guidance and guidelines potentially. Yeah, so 2013, let's say this this recommendation. Uh, 2014, we have fire. You know, like the first fact about healthcare mandating, at least explaining that he has to be done by APIs. In the same time, in Europe, we have PSD2, right? So obliging the start of PSD2, obliging banks to open uh, APIs for account information and payment initiation, of course, with the consent of the user, right? And they have four years to implement. And so, like this, we we begin to have. Uh, banking regulation, healthcare regulation, directly involving APIs as a way to uh, uh, to transfer data. Uh, so it's data portability by APIs between application and platforms. But the user-centric portability has been already made uh, in 20, 2012 with GDPR, right? And so, uh, so, yeah, but in healthcare and banking, as the API evangelist, what was like this big change or this big transformation, like obliging to open APIs? Well, the so it started with with PSD two. I would say is the yeah. is the kind of seed for all of this, and out of the European Union regulating the banking industry, and as we've seen unfold, this the the results of this has been varied depending on what country you're in. Yeah, uh, you know. PSD2 France is one thing, PSD2 Germany is another thing, and PSD2 UK seems 
uh, to be maybe doing the best out of all of it. Uh, but I, for, for me personally, even with the downside and, and, and the things we need to still evolve and learn is the most important part is that it's, it's, it's pollinated elsewhere. So it's similar to GDPR influencing CCPA in California and others. Uh, PSD2 has, is informing conversations going on right now in the U.S. in our Consumer Finance Protection Bureau, uh, CFPB, um, in, in financial banking regulation in this country. So another extension of the Biden administration and what they're doing. Um, I just did a show the other day with uh, Belvo, which is a, a, a payment, a, a, a data, a banking data API uh, that launched in, in Brazil and Colombia and Latin America. And they're exporting PSD2 like standards and characteristics as part of their platform. They don't have to, but, but it's good. And we've seen that happen in, in Southeast Asia. We're seeing PSD2 uh, adoption there. And so it's that 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 spread, um, and and that that happens within an industry. So it's happening in finance, but then it's also influenced, you know, the healthcare space. And as you mentioned, the fire specification in the U.S. Um, it began early. I think it was like 2012, 13 when I first saw it in D.C. And it's been getting traction. And the most recent is uh, the Center for Medicaid and Medicare, or CMS, in the U.S., which is I might get this number wrong. Is like so they they do all the healthcare for for our elderly and and poor, and and it's like thirty something percent of the entire healthcare spend in the U.S. They launched the Blue Button API in 2016 17, and then the CMS launched rules last year. It was kind of quiet during the COVID pandemic that uh, the patient interoperability rule, which requires every state, all 50 states in the U.S. That if you want to do business with with Center for Medicaid and Medicare, uh, you have to have a fire compliant API, and so that's huge. That's the first, even ahead of the financial uh, regulation. That's the first major pure API and standards based uh, rulemaking that has occurred in the U.S. Yep, and and so uh, yeah, at least on healthcare, it's really an, an an example that is trying to be followed in many places uh, of the world. But let's say when it's regulatory regulatory driven, you know, company do it. You know, they want to access to the market, they want to avoid fines, so they do it. What's important, and what I wanted to to talk with you also is about with in 2018 when we've seen the personal data regulations, privacy regulations. CCPA then followed in CCPA in California, the California Consumer Privacy Act. Then we had recently the Colorado Privacy Act. We had also the Consumer Data Protection Act from Virginia. So it's coming in the US too. They don't claim, they don't say it has to be through APIs, right? They don't directly say, say that. And the thing is that company don't implement it. And uh, as, you, as, as, you, as you've seen in my presentation, Company like Airbnb are able to say, we can't send you your data the way you want or, or stuff like that. Uh, I think I have an example with LinkedIn. I ask my data from LinkedIn to be transferred on my public Dropbox. And you know, to transfer your data on a, so first they ask me how secure Dropbox it is. We don't know if the security of Dropbox, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So you have to explain that it's as it's probably more secure than sending it by me via email and sending the password to the same email. So but that, that's that's an, another idea. And so you, you have to type your email to say who sent the data, right? So in the Dropbox, you, when you transfer your file, you say, you know, who put this data in the system? Okay, like, so you, we can say to Medi, like, hey, this person, they claim it was personal data of their employees, so they can't do it. So just to tell you how far, how far it is. So I said, okay, put this whatever email address that is mine. And so like, like this, so just to tell you, yeah, when, of course, APIs are so powerful, help developers to build great application with instantaneous, ubiquitous uh, data, you know, that's extremely valuable right now. But when the regulation does not talk about it, company are of no interest of doing it, right? So, uh, yeah, so my question is like, how can, do we really need to put the word API in regulation to see it happening? Yes. Uh, I mean, there needs to be a lot more education and awareness and, and thank you, you know, to you and folks like Mark Boyd and others who've been doing this work in Europe to educate uh, 
people in government about APIs, why they matter, what's the difference, so that we can influence that policy and get and get that language in there. Because the like technical policies for uh, those of us who work, in, uh, you know, with API gateways and and AWS and these, you apply policies. These things happen at the federal level and state and, and different levels of government is, you know, legal policy. And so that technical policy, the open API definition with the JSON schema, here's what that API should be. And here's what you can as expect as part of a request and response should be baked into the legal policy. And that's going to take some work and awareness. And unfortunately, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of people who need more awareness and education because they feel like, well, we just did service oriented architecture and web services and now API is the next thing, you know, and they're like, well, we're, we're going to wait for the next thing. We're not going to do APIs, you know, what's next. And they don't realize that that APIs are just the next iteration of the web. And it's, it's, it, it helps reduce friction when it comes to that access. APIs are about access and that authentication that delegation of authentication and 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 the authorization of what you have access to in your data that can be standardized and made easier so you don't have that everything you went through with Dropbox and LinkedIn and all of that and we just have to make more people aware and seeing the education that the API days has done since 2013 12 and 13 and that we've all been involved in we've got another decade or two before we're going to see the 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 API being baked into policy at the level at the that the detail level that not only do platforms know what they should implement down to the technical that we in the space activists like you companies like API metrics and others can actually monitor and verify and say yes and certify that these platforms are doing what they should should do and are in compliance with the the regulations so I have a question for you and for people in the audience. Uh, why, if I build an application myself, so I'm as a developer, I register on the developer portal. Let's say an example of Facebook, but it can be on almost every developer portal, right? Uh, and I build an application asking my data, you know, asking the permission on my data. I will get a lot more data that if I exercise my CCPA or my Colorado Privacy Act or my GDPR request of portability to have my data back. It's incredible <laughs> that if I build a third-party application, so company in the ecosystem, like partners uh, of the ecosystem, can have more data about me than me exercising my privacy uh, uh, regulation uh, right. So yeah, if someone has an answer uh, to that, that uh, uh, that. Uh, uh, yeah, that will help me a lot to understand what's what's wrong, <laughs> what's wrong in the ecosystem. So uh, recently, we you know we had this discussion about the, the fact that API neutrality. You know, uh, so the idea that if you open API to a third party about my personal data, you should at least give me the same access to the same API for myself, right? Did you see any company implementing it, or what do you think about this idea? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, following standards and having consistency in APIs so that there's reuse across platforms and providers, reducing the overload for, for applications. But this is, this is what we're going to see. This is the dangers of, um, uh, of kind of data sovereignty, uh, you know, is, is if, we end up with healthcare APIs that are standards or banking APIs that are standardized, but Germany's different, France is different, US is different because of, of these different uh, countries regulating and, and seeing it slightly different. Platforms like Facebook want that because they, they have the resources to develop for each of those APIs. So differences existing in these apps um, in these APIs are beneficial to the ones who can afford to, to, to do the development. And so, but you know how hard this is to get people to agree upon, like, what is a user? What is my data as a user? Just, just like my name, my address, my phone number, my email address, like you could try to get that from 10 different platforms. You know, you got address one, address two, address underscore one, address underscore two. And, and a lot of people, 
don't want to follow standards and 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 find a neutral ground for those designs and what those that data that's being passed back and forth. And so, and again, there's a lot of money in that complexity and, and navigating it, but there's also a lot of laziness and people hiding behind proprietary saying, well, this is our proprietary, you know, but no, it's actually just really poorly designed JSON schema object and, and API. It's not your proprietary anything, but there's a lot of reasons and they, they get create very, they get way more creative about the reasons, you know, like you experience with GDPR, why you can't and why this API is a special snowflake than they'll ever put into actually standardizing it, sharing and making things interoperable. I mean, that's one of the dirtiest secrets in API space. Everyone talks about API interoperability, but very few people actually want it or believe in it. Yeah, yeah. And actually it's true that the user has interest in portability. The global market has interest in portability, but for now, no company has directly interest in portability. Maybe the receiving company but if there is no sending company, <laughs> you receive nothing, you know. So uh, we uh, we even had a, an, an argument, a legal argument about like, for example, does my local location data is provided by me, you know, uh, if I accept it. So that was incredible. So uh, we cannot uh, publish all the discussion we had, crazy discussion, like absurd discussion about uh, about personal data. Uh, but yeah, definitely that was a that was a that was a big mess. So, so maybe the question I will ask you is like, we've seen banking, we've seen healthcare. Some people talk about insurance, maybe to be one of the next. Uh, today, what, what do you see in terms of API, API regulation coming? Do you see anything? Have you any, any feeling? Yeah, I mean, I'm seeing other industries being led by the trade, their trade association. So you see uh, more, I've seen automobile, I've seen shipping industry, I've seen you know, start working the way down the top industries. And you mentioned, you know, healthcare and finance are kind of the two top two. But what's after that, you know, and insurance. So I'm seeing it anywhere there's standards and anywhere there's trade associations, you see talk. Uh, but the problem is, is you see not always the incentive models aligned. So a lot of these old standards bodies have legacy models for how they make money, their membership, and they they make money off of the standards being locked up kind of a lot like ISO and uh, older standards bodies. So those aren't always conducive to open, op open accessible API standards. I've seen a lot of these, uh, I won't name, name them, but I've seen a, a lot of them that use that are using open API, which is a specification for describing an API to describe their industry's API standard and then have to give a disclaimer. Oh, we're just using open API, which is a specification. Our specification is not open and, and it'll still cost you. You have to be a member to be able to use it. And I'm like, wait, what, why, wait, why, you know? And so that's the kind of disconnect, but you see, um, you see other industry led and uh, groups that have newer business models for how they're going to make money or pure open source models. And then you see startups and companies and some enterprise organizations trying to uh, lead by defining a standard or making their platform the standard. So I would say regulatory co regulations come or standards and then regulations come in different waves and can come from the industry, come from the platforms, as well as regulation. And I think it's going to be a mix of it. Um, but I think once the, once the top industries have figured it out, the regulation, the the de technical details are in the in the regulations, and we're seeing the impact of that true interoperability, and people are able to deliver healthcare without worrying about all the internet pipes and the applications. It's all standardized. I think the floodgates are going to open. People are going to realize, oh, there's there's a whole another level of making money. We can all make even more money if we actually work together. And that is is the API economy. It's not individual APIs and people getting rich off your API like Facebook and Twitter did. It's actual API interoperability. So it's coming. It's, it's just not never going to happen as fast as we all want. It's going to take the next 20 to 50 years. So it will be too long. We have uh, one minute for taking a question from the community uh, uh, that has been asked. Um, is it is it better to have a market driven API regulation or government driven API regulation? 
both. It's it's there's not there's, and it and it varies from industry to industry. It's and it's always got to be a public private sector partnership. Um, but it, it sometimes it takes the heavy hand of, of government to move things fast and quick. But it, it's got to be in alignment with the private sector, and and the private sector has to have a voice, has to be at the table. Um, and so it ideally it's always a mix of the two. Uh, it's just whether it's more government or less government um, will vary from industry to industry and depending on the velocity of that industry and how fast it needs to move. Yep. And I, I had a discussion recently with uh, an, an expert in privacy regulation who were telling me that for goods, we have less barriers now, you know, with trade agreements and everything. We have not so many barriers, but with the digital world, actually with all these regulations, which are national regulations, we may have more barriers, you know, and in the digital world than in the physical world. And that was not the, the declaration of independence of the cyberspace, you know, in the, in the 1995. That was, it seems a utopia of the web and, you know, a digital to be like one, one flat world is, is disappearing. Yeah. It, but, you know, regulations aren't always bad. I mean, and I'm saying this from the U.S. where we view regulations as being very bad most of the time. But they can also elevate things, standardize us, and and bring us into a new space. So it's, 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 and there, there's always that need for part of the standards and, and regulation momentum to be in the private sector, part to be the public sector, government-led. And then kind of that bridge, if you look at the, what is it, the Open Banking UK, what do they yep. handle? They handle the directory. So the directory of providers who has access I think the dispute resolution and the specs. So it's like, here's the specs you have to follow. Here's the directory of who has access. And then here's the dispute resolution around that. And that I think that's an important, it may be a different balance or, you know, for each industry or moving forward, but it's a, it's a look at, you know, the banks can have their platforms, the startups can have theirs, the government regulates, and then there's this middle kind of neutral ground that you have to, here's the standards, here's the, the, here's how to solve problems between and, and dispute resolution. And then here's that directory and that discovery. So I think that's an important look at how things should unfold moving forward. Yep. Some regulation restrict, but some regulation elevate. So let's continue to advocate for elevate, elevation, regula elevator regulation. So, Kin, thank you very much. Where, uh, you know, you animate a podcast, you still have your uh, blog. Where we can know more about what you're doing these days? Oh, yeah, it's pretty much all breaking changes. See if I can get the so, um, nice. Postman Breaking Changes is I still write on my blog, API Evangelist, from time to time, but it's definitely this has become my new medium and talking to mostly a. a API practitioners, uh, you know, so I talk, just talked to eBay, I just talked to Ford, you know, I'm, and so it's the place that I'm looking to have these conversations. I'm doing several segments on the Data Access Act, um, on on the different regulatory um, and, and the financial and healthcare space. So uh, that's where I recommend just uh, Google Postman Breaking Changes, and, and it's pretty easy to find. Yeah, thank you very much, Kin, for having been there with us. You have been with us since 2012, so why not uh, continuing in 2021? <laughs> yeah, I, I was looking while I was waiting in the back room for some photos of you from 2012. And uh, and you were like 12 years old, I think, when you first started. You you looked really young. And I think I might have looked young, too. So at some point, maybe I'll, I'll do a talk just on, on what's happened over the years. Yeah, Thanks next year me. next year we celebrate the 10 years of API days, so why not? Wow, wow, what a crazy ride. Well, thank you for everything you've done, Mehdi. This has been great. This is fun. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're just uh, we're just dwarfs on the shoulder of the giants who who uh, who did it before us. So yeah, thank you, Ken. Thank you. Have a good one.